oceans are the last frontier for mankind. We still do not know much about the oceans. In fact, we know much less about the oceans than we know about the space. Oceanography is a young science. It all began in 1872 with an expedition of HMS Challenger, a British ship that during its four-year-long expedition went all around the world, but unfortunately did not come to the Indian Ocean. Until about 1950s, not much was known about the Indian Ocean. And then the world community got together and decided to undertake a major expedition in the Indian Ocean region. That was the International Indian Ocean Expedition from 1959 and lasted till 1965. In this expedition, India played a very active part with 40 cruises conducted on board four ships. After the expedition, the National Institute of Oceanography was founded on 1st January 1966 with a mission, understanding the seas around us and to translate this knowledge to benefit all. NIO has completed 50 years of its existence on 1st January 2016. Oceanography is a science done at the sea, for which you require ships, and NIO commissioned its first research ship called Gaveshani in 1976, which was decommissioned after rendering commendable service for 18 years. Now, NIO has two other ships, Sindhu Sankalp, which is 56 meters long, and Sindhu Sadhana, which is 80 meters long. This is the first research ship completely built in India and is equipped with all the modern instrumentation that is needed for oceanographic research. So currently NIO operates two ships all over the Indian Ocean region, particularly our exclusive economic zone that measures about 2 million square kilometers in area, which is about two-thirds of the area of the Indian land mass. These ships carry out regular observations on physical processes, biological resources, non-living resources, as well as natural and human impacts on climate change and their effects on marine ecosystems and biochemistry of the seas around us. Over the last 50 years, NIO has carried out a great deal of work on the oceanographic processes which are unique to the Indian Ocean because its geography is very different. It is the only ocean which is bounded by landmass towards the north and therefore there is no pole-to-pole -pole connectivity as in case of the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans. Therefore the physical processes, the chemistry, the biology are very different from other oceanic regions. Most of the information on this region, since the Indian Ocean Expedition has been generated largely due to NIO's efforts. This includes circulation, oceanic currents, climate-related issues, the ocean-atmosphere exchange, the biological productivity and biodiversity, the elemental cycling, the geology including the paleoclimates and non-living resources.
Oceans extend from intertidal zone to Mariana Trench, which is 11 kilometers deep. And there are diverse environments in which live organisms that are known to produce very different kinds of compounds and enzymes, depending upon the kind of the environment they live in. There is huge potential for marine biotechnological applications on which NIO has been focusing in the last 10 years, isolating thousands of antimicrobial compounds and testing them. There is a great deal of potential for finding new compounds for commercial and medical applications. In the arena of marine biotechnology, NIO's efforts of identification, selection and harnessing of microbial resources for environmental and industrial biotechnological prospecting. Green technology leads for treating molasses spent wash, textile effluent decolorization, paper de-inking process, heavy metal detoxification, tannery and aquaculture effluent treatment. Simplification of marine pollutant or pollutants pre-screen through bacterial bioluminescence assay. Isolation and purification of most potent serine proteas from a deep sea fungus and lacase from a mangrove fungus. Isolation of novel microbes producing edible pigments useful in food industries are a few of the many examples. So far, the man has been using oceans in a very indiscriminate manner, which is not sustainable, be it for fisheries or be it for transport. The sustainable utilization of oceanic resources requires good understanding of its processes and that is what NIO have been doing. The atmospheric temperature has gone up by close to one degree and a lot of this heat is being transferred to the ocean, heating up the ocean surface as well as interior ocean. Temperature change by about half degree to one degree will make a lot of difference to the marine organisms. As a result, the seawater will expand and because of higher temperature, the polar ice will melt. The sea level is expected to rise between 0.3 meters to about 1 meter by the end of this century, as per the estimates from the model developed at NIO. This is expected to have an impact on the coastal environment and also the people who are living in the coastal areas. NIO is focusing its efforts on the issue of ocean acidification because of the carbon dioxide concentrations that are rising in the atmosphere and some of its carbon dioxide is going into the ocean, making the seawater acidic. This will also have an impact on marine organisms, particularly corals that account for about 20% of the global marine biodiversity. Another effect that the human activity is having on the oceans is ocean deoxygenation, which means that the oceans are losing oxygen, which also has an impact on marine life. Biological oceanographic researches have contributed significantly to our understanding of the Indian Ocean biology productivity characteristics, coastal bioresources diversity and seasonal variability as well as the adverse impacts biota suffers from pollution. Mapping of primary, phytoplankton, secondary, zooplankton, microbial, bacteria, benthic, coral reef and mangrove productivity of the seas around India and characterization of their spatio-temporal variabilities are useful to make realistic assessment of fish production in the seas around India. Biodiversity description of planktonic communities in our estuarine, coastal, open ocean and island seas 
has enabled NIO to reorganize the existence of multi-species and highly diverse fish food biota. NIO is also looking at the impact of ballast water being released by ships from one place to another, thereby transporting organisms from one ecosystem to another and from one geographical area to another. These are alien species and they have deleterious impact on that environment. The zebra mussel is the best example as it comes from the Caspian and has spread all over the Great Lakes in North America. NIO is the nodal agency in India to work on ballast water and to advise the Ministry of Shipping on related issues. NIO has had a major project on prospecting for marine minerals called polymetallic nodules. These are deep sea minerals that occur on the sea floor in the open ocean and it was because of the extensive research carried out by the scientists of NIO in 1980s and 90s that India was recognized as a pioneer investor and India was allotted a site measuring 75,000 square kilometers where we have exclusive mining rights. India became the first country in the world to be recognized by the International Seabed Authority for this purpose. NIO is also conducting studies to predict the potential environmental impact of mining these minerals. NIO have also carried out explorations on placer deposits, which are sands rich in ilmenite, which is a source of titanium and monazite, which is a radioactive mineral. Lately, NIO has also been working on gas hydrates, which are a potential source of energy. NIO's efforts have led to identification of different types of non-living resources that would be useful for the country in future. Another area that NIO has been working on is marine archaeology. Marine archaeological research was pioneered by NIO in 1981. This is an important issue because the sea level has been going up and down and the settlements in coastal areas have been submerged. NIO is credited for its discovery of number of sites including Dwarka, Bet Dwarka, Pindara, Somnath and Pumpuhar. And lately NIO has been working in Mahabalipuram and several other areas along the Indian coastline. Besides its contributions in scientific research, NIO scientists have been involved in development of technology and products, largely in the area of marine instrumentation, such as building instruments or oceanographic observations such as autonomous underwater vehicle, vertical profiler and automatic weather station. And some of these technologies are also being commercially marketed. NIO has made important contributions by offering services in the form of sponsored research, which deals with problems that are relevant to the industry and society. NIO conducts studies for industries in coastal areas and advises them on aspects related to marine pollution, including fingerprinting of oil spill and tar balls, environmental impact assessment, design parameter for offshore installations and coastal regulation zone compliance. NIO's contribution to biological aspects of environmental impact assessment analyzes from the end-user perspectives of coastal space utilization for industrial, recreational and relevant ecological purposes. Through sponsored research, NIO generates substantial resources 
and a quarter of the budget is met out of support from non-governmental sources. Most of the information that has been generated since the Indian Ocean Expedition has come largely because of work carried out in this institute. And this information has been published in scientific papers. NIO scientists have published about 4,000 papers so far and they have about 40,000 citations. As oceanography is a very expensive science and most countries as well as organizations in this region do not have the expertise or the resources to carry out oceanographic research. NIO offers tailor-made training programs for researchers, professionals, academicians and students not only from India but also from countries of the Indian Ocean region as well as SARC and around the world. NIO has an active collaborative program with several international research and academic institutions. NIO offers specialized PhD program for students as well as project assistantship to fresh graduates and postgraduates that enables them to get jobs over the years. Groups of students from science and engineering colleges also visit NIO and are apprised of ongoing research and career opportunities in the field of oceanography. At a global level, scientists from NIO have been serving on the working groups, scientific steering committees, expert panels and advisory committees. NIO has also made a lot of contribution to global efforts in carrying out oceanographic research through collaboration with other oceanographic institutions around the world as well as organizing international conferences. In order to achieve these, NIO has developed state-of-the-art infrastructure not only in terms of its capability to make oceanographic observations but also for data analysis and processing excellent IT connectivity, library and engineering services, ably supported by the staff in areas of administration, finance, stores and purchase, human resources, publication and repography, security and housekeeping. Due to the science that this institution has carried out and the expertise that NIO has gained, NIO is globally recognized as one of the top oceanographic laboratories in the world.